Hey everyone, welcome to Bikini Bottom. In today's video, we're going to be covering the SX prop that is a part of Mirtil UI V5, which is the newest version of Mirtil UI, and they added this prop in to really speed up development when it comes to styling your React components. Now, of course, you're not going to be using this prop all the time to style things. One of the best things about Mirtil UI is they offer so many different styling solutions for different cases, and a lot of the times it's best to mingle them together depending on what type of stylings you're applying, what the component is and what your overall goal is as a web developer for the current project you're working on. Specifically, this SX prop will only be used for things that are sort of one-off changes and very quick utility style adds to your components. Things like adding margins or paddings or quickly changing the color of one of the components. Necessarily, the styles you apply here probably aren't going to be reusable in other components and if they are, I'd recommend using the styled version of the component, which I can talk about in another video but for today we're focusing on the um sx prop and if you find value in this video make sure you leave a comment drop a like and subscribe it helps so much with the youtube algorithm get these videos out there to more and more people and it helps a lot with the channel so thanks for doing that and i'll try my best to reply to every single comment so I have a little code sandbox set up here and you will have access to this in the description if you want to play around with it as well. But all I have here are two buttons, button number one and button number two. They're just standard material UI buttons. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the SX prop and in that SX prop, the uh, structure of it is going to be within two curly braces, very similar to sort of how you would do the um, styles prop in traditional React components if you're familiar with that. But all you're going to do is add the SX prop you're gonna add your curly braces and you're gonna set what other style you want to happen. And we can see here, all we're doing is setting the width to 200 pixels and the button has changed to 200 pixels. Now, this is of course the simplest application. You can add as many styles in here as you want. For example, I can add padding to, let's say for example, 10 pixels and it will go ahead and make the padding of this button equal to uh, 10 pixels. I can even make it 100 and you'll see that it is affecting both of those because we have this stack going on. But if I were to replace the stack with just a React fragment, Segment, you would see that it's actually only impacting the one button. Um, the reason the other button was moving is because Mertor UI components are pretty responsive. Um, so if they're in a div um, or a container that have certain styles like flex enabled, they're going to naturally try to fill that space up if something else in there has happened. But nonetheless, let's just get back to our one button example. You can see here that it's pretty simple. We're adding styles to it. Now, the interesting part about this is the developers actually coded in a lot of material UI specific customization into these props. And I'm gonna go through each one of them and show you guys what I mean. So the first sort of customization is the fact that these props are theme aware. And what that means is, there are certain things that you would normally not be able to do with regular CSS that you can do within this SX prop. For example, use theme variables. If you're not familiar with theme variables in Material UI, Material UI components by default have a theme injected into it. That theme determines the default font, the default colors for things. For example, the font that this button has and the blue that the button is using is a default, um, are all defaults coming from the theme. And we can go ahead and specify specific things uh, you know, uh, that you would need the theme prop to do normally. So for example, in this example, they are setting the border color to primary main. And primary.main is with an object within the theme that you normally would only be able to access it by passing in a theme uh, parameter in the sort of function. So making it a function and passing in that theme. So let's go ahead and give it a border. Uh, so we can go ahead and give it a border of let's say like five and that will just create a standard border of five pixels on each side and then what we're going to do is we're going to set the border color equal to and in strings we can do primary dot main and if we do primary dot main primary dot main is that blue color so it won't look any different but if we choose uh the secondary color that material ui comes with in the theme which i think is purple you can see that it sets it to this purple which normally you would have to do a bit of custom coding to be able to access theme variables within your css um, and use it like that and if you're not familiar with theme again i will have a whole video on how to use material ui theme so don't worry too much about that just know that the sx prop allows you to pass that in now there are some other things we can do as well well, for example, they have some shorthands like being able to set the display print to none. Um, also, things like being able to set the grid um, spacings. So in this case, um, 
Mature UI's theme also comes with standard spacing. So for example, if you look here at this code, if you were to do theme.spacing and pass in two, it would just multiply that two by traditionally eight pixels. Um, and it would give you uh, 16 pixels of space. However, you can add um, some shorthands that you just pass in a value and it will naturally multiply it by that theme value. I wouldn't worry too much about this case. It's pretty esoteric, um, but let's go ahead and move on. You can see that we've already talked about the palette a bit, um, also positions and stuff like that. So if you are sort of getting different positions from your tool, uh, from your theme as well, like the Z index value, you can access that from here. Also, there are some values like, for example, shadows, where if you just pass in a number, it will simply pass in um, and it will transpose whatever the theme is onto it. Now, let's keep going until we sort of get more to the uh, shorthand side of things. So, for example, they have a lot of cool shorthands. So over here in the example, I passed in, um, you know, a padding of 100 pixels. Um, now, if I wanted to, for example, let's change this padding to 16 pixels just to make it a bit smaller. You can see the button's a bit bigger. They allow you to pass in a shorthand value for padding, which is just called P. And if I wanted to make it 16 pixels, I could pass in the value two, which will multiply by the default theme value of eight to get 16 pixels. And you'll see here that it still remains. And if I were to increase it to three, I would get three times eight, four, I would get four times eight padding. This shorthand applies to a bunch of different CSS. Uh, for example, you can apply to margin through uh, M. I believe they also have the specific margin. So margin top, MT, um, and everything else. Um, you can also access the theme variable uh, from typography. So for example, um, in uh, your theme, sometimes you would specify uh, a value called font weight light, and that would carry a specific font weight value. Like for example, maybe uh, if it's light, maybe a value of like 400, um, uh, a stroke size of like 400 for the actual um, text itself. So you can also specify that type of things. Another cool example that they don't talk about, I think over here, is you're actually able to um, still target global classes uh, within uh, Material UI components. So for each Material UI component, if you go to the API for that component, um, it will have all the different props. But if you scroll down, you can see this sort of section called CSS. And when I was first learning uh, Material UI, it took me a little while to understand how all of this worked. But essentially, each one of these Material UI components, including something as simple as a button, is made up of a lot of inner components on their end. And if you wanted to, for example, only change the uh, styles that are applied to this text, it'd sort of be hard to just pass in classes um, into your button, right? For example, like if I wanted only that uh, the text or I wanted just like, you know, maybe some padding around the text of the button for whatever reason, um, if I were to just apply padding over here, it, there's no way to specifically target the text unless you use their CSS overrides. And there are multiple different ways to use these CSS overrides. So one of the more popular ways is through this global class selector thing. So what you can do is you can apply a selector that targets the class, for example, of each one of these sort of things. So for example, the root of the component or the uh, text specifically in the component, um, or even for example, you can apply conditional classes like if uh, the component if our button is outlined. So right now our the variant of our button is contained But if I were to change this to outlined, uh, I'll change the other one You can see that it's sort of a different button So you can also apply classes that will only apply to buttons that are outlined and stuff like that You can actually target these global classes uh, through styles as well So let's go ahead and just take the root for example And I'm gonna go ahead and just add a very basic selector so it's gonna be a little and sign and then uh, the dot. And then anything you want to target about it, you can put in here. So for example, um, I want the, the height of the root to just be 100 pixels. And you can see that it made that better. Now, if we wanted to target something else like text, this is a bit misleading because these styles only get applied um, if the variant of the, of the actual uh, button is text itself. So there are some things you can go ahead and target if the specific other props of the button or the material UI components are set as well. So I believe you can even target things as uh, specific as whether or not um, you know, the size of the button is large or the size of the button here. For example, you can target 
specific stylings only if the size of the button is large and the variant is outlined. Now, if we keep going and scrolling through, we can see that we can also pass in and get values from the theme itself. So for anything that might have a sh not have a shorthand, like if you're not just trying to apply a color or a different font weight and stuff like that, or you have some custom theme values, you can get it straight from the theme object itself, uh, which should be injected at the top level of your component. So this theme will be injected in regardless. Um, and when I say the top level, sorry, I mean the top level of your sort of React DOM tree, uh, because usually if you're overriding the theme, um, you do that at the top level where all your other components are nested within it. So everything should be on the same page when it comes to theme and stuff like that as well. But we can go into more detail with that in the theme video as well. Now, the other cool thing I like about this is you can pass in array values. And what this allows you to do is it sort of allows you to add some cool conditioning logic. So let's say, for example, I have a really, really, really basic like const test equals false. Let's say I have a Boolean and, you know, in a real world application, this test is actually a real value that might be true or false. Well, what you can do is you can pass in an array of values and you can do things like make it so that the styles that are applied are conditional. So in this array, I'm passing in the normal styles, but I'm also going to add another array element that is only going to be there if a test is true. So let's say, for example, I don't know, let's make like the, the like a uh, border like, like 10. So let's make the border bigger. And you'll see that it's not doing anything because it's reliant on test being true and it's false. But as soon as we change this to true, you'll see that it actually overwrote the border stylings for it. And we can go ahead and maybe even, you know, add like, a, like, a, uh, like that. So as soon as like test becomes false, you can see that it goes back to the old stylings, but as soon as test is true, you can see that it goes back to the new stylings. So I think that in itself is pretty worthwhile using. A lot of the times I'm, apply I'm applying conditional styles and with the traditional material IV4 of using make styles and stuff like that, sometimes it gets a bit complicated to you know append different class names depending on your React code, but this way it makes it a lot cooler. Um, some other cool things you can do, for example, is the idea of being able to pass in sort of responsive values even more. So for example, if you pass in the width, Matoi Wise theme naturally has specific breakpoints. And what you can go ahead and do is I can pass in, instead of having this width object, I can pass in an entire, um, what's it called, an entire object with all the different breakpoints that my material UI theme has and just specify what I want the width to be for each one of those breakpoints. So you can see now, right now, I don't know uh, exactly what I'm currently on, um, what breakpoint uh, code sandbox has this in. If I go look at the width, I'll probably be able to tell. So right now the width's at 100. So right now the screen size is at 100 uh, extra small, so 100 PX. But as I go ahead and sort of make this bigger and bigger, you'll see that as the screen size starts to change, the button will also change as well because they actually coded it in that it will look for any of your breakpoints and apply whatever you're looking at specifically for things like width and any other keywords they might have to that um, component itself, which I think is pretty amazing, um, especially if you're, compo you're coding something really quickly and you want to make it just responsive uh, and you don't have too many use cases and stuff like that. It allows you uh, to get a lot more freedom and it's a lot better than using media queries to style um, and apply different classes depending on um, all the different uh, screen sizes if you're just looking to style something really quickly. Otherwise, I'd probably still use media queries, which I will also cover in another video. But that's pretty much it for the uh, XS prop. It's really useful. I think there are a lot of other like sort of uh, really esoteric use cases for it if you're really interested in, but they even say in the documentation, it might not make too much sense to actually focus on too many of these cases, but just to start using it to save you a bit of time with some of the shorthands and stuff like that. And if you found value in this video, make sure you subscribe, leave a comment. It helps so much with the YouTube algorithm when they see someone leaving a comment and I'll see you guys in the next video.